The Canadian federal government plans to resettle 25,000 Syrians over the next three months. Our Liberal Progressive Prime Minister has fawned about how his government's plan reflects Canada's accepting, progressive and prosperous nature, and has spoken cloyingly about how diversity is Canada's strength. He has promised to vanquish intolerance against the Syrian refugees entering Canada en masse. It's lovely rhetoric, and helping people when you're able to is obviously something you want to do. I, however, do not see Canada or many Western countries as it is being in a state where they should take in refugees or mass immigration. I'm a libertarian, and the topic of immigration is the subject of heated debate in libertarian circles. On the one hand, some argue that immigration will improve competition in the labor market, and that border controls themselves are just another example of the state tyrannizing individuals. I believe these assertions are misguided and that there are far stronger libertarian arguments against immigration and against open borders. There are other anti-statists who agree with me. Ron Paul is one notable example, along with the anarcho-capitalist Hans Hermann Hoppe, who argued very coherently against open borders. Hoppe argued that if the government accepted refugees into a country where there was no current property owner who wished to bring them onto their land, that would be forced integration by the government. This violates the non-aggression principle, which is the very basis of libertarianism. In other words, unless it's private businesses or individuals inviting immigrants and refugees over to do work or live on their property, it's not a libertarian policy. It's a statist one. It's also clearly false altruism from Justin Trudeau and those in his party who support this plan. I doubt either him or his cabinet are going to host any refugees in their guest rooms anytime soon. I find it fascinating to see libertarians and even conservatives supporting this notion. Does anyone really think that as soon as the refugees arrive, they will detach themselves from the appealing teat of the welfare state? The vast majority of them will go straight into subsidized housing when we can't even solve our current housing crisis and send their children to public schools. This integration is of course all paid for by taxes. In fact, the Liberals' refugee resettlement plan is estimated to cost $1.2 billion over six years. Trudeau is presiding over a country that is currently $1.2 trillion in debt, but for some reason he is more concerned with the prosperity of humanity worldwide than improving the lives of Canadian citizens who elected him and ensuring Canada will continue to be prosperous. It won't be great for the immigrants either. Their children will also have to grow up struggling under the debt and dependency culture created by the Trudeau government. Right now, we are living in a welfare state, eager to increase its reach and its power. It is insane to think mass immigration and resettlement of refugees will not have an impact on this process. The second reason why libertarians should think twice about immigration is a cultural one. The question we need to ask ourselves is, do the immigrants we're welcoming to our shores come from a culture of liberty? The refugees are coming from an extremely different culture to us here in the West. Middle Eastern societies are characterized by rampant homophobia, religious intolerance, and sexism. I once held up a sign at a feminist rally saying there is no rape culture in the West. But that's only in the West. There are very real rape cultures in the Middle East. Marital rape is legal in many Middle Eastern countries, and the UN reports rape is being used as a weapon of war in Syria. It's no better for any other groups that the feminist progressive Trudeau government claims to support. In most Middle Eastern countries, being gay will get you killed. Now, some of the refugees are coming to the West precisely to escape those horrors, but not all of them. In fact, polls have shown around 13% of Syrian refugees have admitted they have positive feelings towards ISIS. Sharia law is also exceptionally authoritarian and is one of the dominant ways of structuring civil society in the Middle East. If a Syrian refugee or immigrant does not agree with the values of liberty, it is insanity to think that they would want to preserve it as it exists in the West. Now, yes, not all of these individuals supporting ISIS or refugees are going to directly throw homosexuals off of roofs like ISIS, but a significant proportion are going to be cheering on the executioners from the street level. I have a question for people who believe libertarians should support more immigration and open borders. Would you import thousands of hardline communists into the country? Would that be a wise idea for people who want less government, less statism, and a more tolerant society? Would we have allowed thousands of Bolsheviks to emigrate during the Cold War? I don't think we would, 
because we knew they didn't believe in a free society. We already have plenty of people in Western democracies who hate freedom, and it's why myself and others are constantly fighting to defend it. When I suggest they move to Cuba or North Korea if they don't like freedom of speech, I mean it. I want to live in a culture that supports freedom and liberty and diverse ideas. If you don't want freedom and liberty and you want everyone to think one way and don't believe in freedom of speech and expression, I think you should move to a more statist country. You would be best suited there. And I honestly do hope for the best for these refugees and I understand the stereotypes do not cover them all. I would like to see them resettled in places that are far more culturally suitable for them though. Most people don't like to consider the fact that some cultures don't mix well, because that's not a politically correct statement. And in moments of extreme heartbreak and emotion, like this terrible refugee crisis, people don't usually want to crunch numbers or talk logic either, which is why this can come across as cold-hearted. But when big decisions need to be made, you ultimately have to use your brains and not your heart. The Arabic-speaking world of Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates are not only a better cultural match, but they also have plenty of space to take them. In fact, Saudi Arabia has 100,000 air-conditioned tents for the refugees, but will take none. So much for the Arab Brotherhood. I'm not saying don't take in any refugees or any immigrants. It's okay to bring people from different cultures with different ideas, especially if they're migrating to escape tyranny. But as libertarians or simply supporters of freedom, we have to make sure they aren't bringing an authoritarian culture with them. Just take a look at the huge cultural shift that Europe is facing right now. It provides a fair warning for Canada and other Western nations alike as well. You should not import people numerous enough to influence your society, change its laws, and destroy your culture. Or create pockets of tyranny within them, like the Sharia zones and rape cultures seen in some British towns. To sum things up, the author Learned Hand said that liberty lies in the hearts of men and women. When it dies there, no constitution, no law, no court can save it. Let's make sure that our spark of liberty will not be crushed by men and women in whose hearts liberty was never born.